What's up guys, it's Brian again from Lake Hickory Scuba Marina. A Brian Shaw commented on one of my videos on YouTube. It was on my personal tanks videos where I showed you all my personal tanks. And he asked a question on whether I, I prefer low pressure versus high pressure cylinders. And it really depends on what I'm doing. Well today I wanna to focus on low pressure and high pressure cylinders and some of the differences that we get when we fill these tanks. Now when you go to buy a tank or you're trying to determine what tank that you need for you as a diver, there's several considerations. First, what's your RMV rate and your sac rate, meaning how much air, how much cubic foot of air, and how much PSI do you breathe per minute. Then we want to determine how long we can actually spend under the water and how much air we need. Now if you've got any questions on any of those things I just mentioned, I'll put links in the description below of how you can calculate your RMV, your sac rate, how you can calculate uh, how much air you'll need for a given dive. There'll be links in the description below that you can click on and watch the videos where we show you how to calculate that. But once I've determined all that, I want to focus too on buoyancy characteristics. Because we understand aluminum versus steel is going to have different buoyancy characteristics and a weight of a tank, even if it's steel, you know, low pressure versus high pressure, weights are going to be different. And buoyancy characteristics make a big deal or a that's a big concern when we start talking about what size cylinder we want to choose. The last thing I want to talk about, of course, is where do you get your tanks filled? Because sometimes we have what's called hot filling. Hot filling is any time that we overfill a tank more than its rated working pressure. We also have what's called the 10% rule. The 10% rule are when tanks are plus rated, primarily on steel. I don't know if I've ever seen an aluminum tank plus rated, but on steel cylinders, they can be plus rated up to 10% above their working pressure, meaning you can put 10% more air in them and they're fine. Now that 10% rule is usually only up to the first five years within the, the manufacture date of the tank. At Hydro, if they're not plus rated, then the 10% rule kind of goes away. But then we have what's called an extra hot fill, and we're going to get into the extra hot fill here towards the end of the video, and I'll show you where places extra hot fill your tanks, whether it's because of ignorance or they're, they just don't care. And we see it as in, yes, we're getting a lot more air, but we don't think about the consideration of what it does to our actual cylinder. So what I'm gonna focus this video on, and I've got a chart here, I've picked out some of the most common cylinders that divers use, especially in our area. This may not be worldwide, but in our area from North Carolina, say down to Florida, and we're gonna focus on the Northern Florida area, or what we call the cave country, because that's where a lot of these extra hot fields are going on and they're happening. Like I said, maybe it's cause of ignorance or they just don't care, and what actually, how much air you actually get from those hot fields. So what we're gonna be looking at, of course, is a steel 100 high pressure, a steel 95 low pressure, a steel 85 low pressure, a steel 72 low pressure, an aluminum 100 high pressure, and then of course an aluminum 80, call it high pressure or low pressure or normal pressure, whatever you wanna look. So this first little line here is gonna be the size of the cylinder that we're gonna be talking about in cubic footage. We're going to look at the pressure rating, meaning how much PSI from the manufacturer it's rated for. We'll look at the 10% rule, and we did add the 10% to the aluminum cylinders, even though they don't come 10% rated. Just for argument's sake, we're going to put it in there just to show you the calculations. And then, of course, we're going to go and look at what we call the K fields or extra hot fields that sometimes we get in the northern Florida Springs area. So when I go to determine all this, like I said, all those factors in the beginning that I talked about, my sac rate, my RMV rate, my buoyancy characteristics, do I need more weight, less weight, do I need singles, doubles, all that's gonna play a big role in choosing a cylinder. Once I've determined that, then of course I'm gonna pick my cylinder. Now, once I've picked a cylinder, I need to understand how much air I can actually put into the tank. Now, some of the things that we're gonna make a given on this chart is we never want to exceed the working pressure of the burst disc because we don't wanna blow that burst disc. We are gonna be working with the workable rated pressure from the manufacturer. We will give take into account the 10% rule for plus rated steel cylinders. And then, like I said, we're gonna talk about the K field. We're not gonna be going up to hydrostatic pressures, which is five thirds of working pressure. We're never gonna go that high. And once again, these extra hot fields, I'm gonna call the 10% a hot field and the K fields are the extra, are the extra hot fields. So when we look at all this, we really need to take into consideration how much air we need, how much air we're actually getting, and then what it does to our cylinder. So starting out again, let's look at the high pressure steel 100. That's 100 cubic feet 
filled at a 3,442 PSI rating. That means it's filled to its max of what the manufacturer says it can take or the workable pressure. So if I take a 100 cubic foot cylinder and fill it at 3,442, I get 100 cubic foot of air. Now, if that tank is a 10% rated, it's got that little plus symbol on it, that means I can put 10% more air in so I can actually get 3,786 PSI in that cylinder without it damaging the cylinder. That gives me a total uh, cubic footage of 109 cubic feet. Now, what is that extra hot fill or the K fill? This doesn't always mean that I'm getting extra air. Some of the shops in Northern Florida will never fill a cylinder regardless of its pressure rating higher than 3,000 PSI. Well, since this cylinder is already rated at 3442, if I only go to what they will give me, the maximum amount, which is 3000, that actually drops my cubic footage down to 87 cubic foot. So I'm actually losing 13 cubic feet of air simply because they will not fill that cylinder to the 3442 rating. So I'm actually on 100 cubic foot, which happens to be one of my favorite cylinders. I'm actually getting gypped when I go to Northern Florida and I don't get the full feel. Now, not all shops are like that. It's a very limited few select shops that do it, but they are out there and they are popular shops as well. So let's drop down to a low pressure steel cylinder that's rated to a lower working pressure and see what the hot fill of 10% and the extra hot fill jumping up to 3000 PSI would give me. If I do a 95 cubic foot low pressure that's rated to 2400, which gives me the 95 cubic feet, if I bump it up 10%, which is 2640 PSI, I actually come out with a 104 cubic foot cylinder. That's four cubic foot lower or more air than what the high pressure 100 is. Now, that's actually going to be an extra hot fill at those shops that only give me 3,000. A 3,000 PSI versus a 2,400 PSI, that's 600 more PSI, will actually give me 118 cubic feet. Now, once again, we're, we're not recommending you go out and do this. We just want you to understand the, the possibilities of what can happen when you get out there. Now, do I believe that the 118 cubic feet is going to blow up on your back or anything like that? No, I don't believe that because I've personally used low pressure 95s, extra hot field at those locations, and I'm fine. I'm living, I'm breathing, I'm here to tell you about it today. But I do not recommend it simply based off what it does to the cylinder over time. Now, I will give the fact that it takes a lot of time, a lot of feels, constant feels that high to do that, but you are wearing your gear down, you're wearing burst disc out. No burst disc ain't expensive, but every little cent counts when you're having to repair gear. But if you extra hot feel, 3000 PSI for a 2400 uh, PSI tank at 95 cubic foot, that'll actually give you 118 cubic foot. Jumping on down, let's go to an 85 cubic foot cylinder. It's a low pressure cylinder rated at 2400 PSI. At 2400 PSI, of course, you got 85 cubic foot. At a plus 10 or a 10% rating, that gives you 2,640 PSI. This would actually bump the tank up to the equivalent of a 93 cubic foot cylinder. Now, once again, if I'm if I stick with the 10% rule at 93 cubic foot, if I wanted just a little bit extra, I'll spend a little extra money and go with 100. So that's something to take into consideration. Now, the extra hot fill, which you get in those specialty shops there. You're going to get 106 cubic foot if you bump that 2400 up to 3000 psi so that kind of shows you that extra hot feel you're getting six more cubic foot than what you would at a standard feel of a hundred uh, high pressure cylinder jumping down down to the low pressure steel 72 now these tanks are no longer available I'm not saying you can't find them out there and i personally i love 72s i use them all the time but i'm going to show you one reason i use a steel 72. A low pressure steel 72 is only rated at 2,250 PSI. That gives me the 72 cubic feet. If I bump that 2,200 up 10%, or that 2,250 up 10%, that gives me 2,475 uh, PSI. That will bump that tank up to a 79 cubic foot tank. For argument's sake, we'll say an 80. It's kind of the same thing as an 80 aluminum. Um, the reason I use a 72 is more nostalgic reasons than anything. I, I like the old sea hunt type uh, days. So, uh, you know, big fan of Mike Nelson. So I really like the steel 72s. But all in all, you know, it, it's the same thing as an aluminum 80 uh, at that pressure rating. Now, when I take that cylinder to those areas in Northern Florida, where they give me 3,000 PSI, I'm going from 2,250 PSI, 72 cubic foot, to 3,000 PSI, that actually gives me 96 cubic foot of air. That's four cubic foot less 
than the high pressure steel 100. Now, this is very dangerous to do and it's not good on your tank. I'm just telling you in reality what happens. I've got almost the exact same amount of air as the steel 100 in a steel 72, simply because they've extra hot filled that thing to 3000 PSI. Moving on down, let's look at the aluminum 100 cylinder. The aluminum 100 is rated at 3300 PSI. At 3300 PSI, you're actually gonna have 100 cubic feet. Now, once again, aluminum cylinders are typically not, and I don't know if I've ever seen them plus rated, but let's say that they are for argument's sake. Plus rated at 10% will give you 3630 PSI. That's gonna bump an aluminum 100 up to 109 cubic feet. It's the same thing as the steel 100 at 109 cubic feet. Now, when you go into cave country, of course, they're only gonna give you 3,000, so you're losing 300 PSI from 3,300 to 3,000. You're only gonna have 90 cubic feet in that cylinder, okay? An aluminum 80, which is the most common, most standard cylinder out there, rated at 3,000 PSI, which gives you the 80 cubic feet. If they're plus rated, you can jack them up to around 3,300 PSI, which will actually give you 87 cubic feet, gives you pretty much seven more cubic feet than what you normally would have. And of course, in cave country, they will fill that to the working pressure, which would give you the 80 cubic feet uh, of air inside your cylinder. So there is kind of a brief description of how much air your tank will hold, the 10% rule, and the extra hot K fill. And if you notice, there's only three that are extra hot K fills. One is spot on, the other two is a lot lower than what you would expect. So when you go to choose a tank, base it off your RMV rate, your sack rate, your buoyancy characteristics that you need, and how much air you need to make that dive. And then once you determine that, then start looking at the size of the cylinders, what the rated pressure is, the 10% pressure, and then of course the extra hot pressure or extra hot feel if you will, and make your decision from that. Now there's never going to be that one magical tank that's going to work for every situation out there, but if you know what type of diver you are, what type of diver you want to become, and what gear that you've already chose, what will work with that equipment, then choosing a cylinder becomes actually very easy. So I showed you the, the video a while back of what tanks do I use. Out of all these cylinders, the ones that I use the most is the 100 high pressure steel. I use the low pressure steel 72 and just the standard old aluminum 80. Doesn't matter if I'm side mount diving, if I'm deep diving, if I'm doing rescue diving, if I'm teaching a course, if I'm doing my salvage work or public safety work, these are some of the cylinders I use throughout. I don't get caught up in the low pressure, although I do like the fact that low pressure Jacking them up the 10% rule it gives me a lot more air. My sack rate, my RMV rate is so low, I don't need that extra air. I have a very low sack and RMV rate, which makes me conserve quite a bit of air throughout my dive. And even doing technical diving or really, really deep diving, when you've got to take extra air with you, you know, I'm perfectly okay using aluminums, diving side mount, or taking a couple stage or sling bottles with me, and I'm good to go. So I try my best not to get too technical. This video is actually very technical, and I apologize for that. I hope you don't get confused with it. Keep diving fun. Do not overthink diving, and, and you'll be a much better diver for it, and you'll have a lot more fun. But guys, if you have any questions on this, please put it down in the comment section below. I'll try my best to get back to you and answer it in any way. Um, if you want to send me a private message, you can. If you don't want it out there in the public forum and whatnot, but ask me a question on this and I'll try to get back to you. If you got any suggestions on future videos or things that you want to see, whether it's involving tanks or anything like that, please put it down in the comment section below. Make sure you check out the other links in the description and check out those videos as well. If you want to know how I come up with these numbers, simply put it down and I'll show you how we do the calculation to come up with these numbers and ratings and all that. And, and I'll try to make a video on that as well. But I really appreciate you watching these videos, guys. If it wasn't for you, we wouldn't be making these videos. Keep putting the comments down, keep putting questions down, and we'll make more videos. As always, make sure you follow us on Instagram and Twitter, like us on Facebook, pin us on Pinterest, subscribe to us here on YouTube, and as always, guys, we appreciate your business.